Hey, thanks for clicking on the video. Today we are doing a farm tour at Belli Beef, which is around 150 acres in the Noosa hinterland. We're going to be looking at some grass-fed, grass-finished beef and some Syntropics. Sit back, relax, enjoy the video, and I hope you can learn something with me. Let's get into it. So we uh, decided to implement a Syntropic uh, garden. Yep. Uh, the Syntropics is more for fruit production rather than vegetables. It is a way, to, a way of planting to accelerate nature but uh, work with Mother Nature rather than against it and we're mimicking nature as much as possible. Yep. So it's a little bit different to like a food forest per se. Um, the food forest has like seven levels. It is about succession planting. It is about support planting and planting stuff that will help other things, the fruit in mm -hmm. the system grow. So a lot of it is there just for support basically because they all bring different nutrients to the area. And you know, they share nutrients through the um, mycelium network and stuff mm -hmm. like that. So yeah, then once it's served its purpose, it will be removed from the system. It will be left to rot and, and feed mm -hmm. the fruit. And so the system goes on. So for someone that's never heard of Syntropics before, what's, what's the benefit of doing it like this compared to just planting a bunch of the, the same tree or doing it conventionally? The fact that all of the different uh, components ha have different requirements and they'll bring different nutrients right. to the vicinity so and that's where they'll sort of share the different nutrients um, it's also about water I don't know if you want to say conservation but for example we have bananas in the system because they draw water to the area yep. and they'll feed those around it with water but also once the banana is fruited for example we'll chop it out cut it up and then leave it on the system like leave it out on on the side to feed the system there's about 100 liters of water in a mature banana tree so wow. and that will literally just drip feed into the system and again it will obviously decompose and its nutrients will feed the, the fruit that's sort of left in the system so even though banana is a fruiting fruit <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> or a fruiting plant yep. um, we will harvest the bananas but it is actually in the system to right. support the rest of the the system yeah the, the fruit that you want to grow um you know like if you wanted to plant apples or oranges or whatever yeah. we we pretty much have almost one of everything you can think of in the yeah. system <laughs> and yes there's things in here that we would not harvest so for example we've got lily pillies in the system as well they are there because they're prone to pruning mm -hmm. which means you can cut their branches and lay it on the system and as they decompose they will just feed the plants that are there to be harvested mm -hmm. basically we do plant according to light requirements so for example you have a high a medium or a low strata so your high strata requires more light than your low or medium strata mm -hmm. um, we also plant the rows from north to south rather than east to west so that when the sun rises in the east the whole row has as much sunlight as possible. Right. And when it, you know, obviously after 12 o'clock it goes down on the western side and again, the whole row has as much light as possible. Yep. Um, and then we use the plants. So we've got the pioneer plants, for example, the eucalyptus. Mm -hmm. They will, they grow really quickly. And then uh, we use them as a canopy. So they will help with the light control for medium and low strata plants. So would you say, the syntropic system is almost the same as just mimicking what forests do on their own, but doing it in a way where you can get something out of it. Absolutely. So the, we don't take anything away. I think the difference, my understanding of the difference between permaculture and syntropics is permaculture, you, would chop, you, would, you could potentially plant like this and then mm. you would chop things down, take them away, make compost, and then bring them back six months later. 
Mm -hmm. Whereas within Centropics, you just chop and drop. So the, whatever you're dropping will just decompose and actually feed the system like there and then. Like I'm, I don't have to, I don't have any other inputs other than when you first put in the system, obviously. Mm -hmm. You, you put some inputs in at that point. But yeah, so in nature, if you see a tree fall in, in, the, in the forest, nobody comes out and removes the tree yeah. and goes and makes compost and brings it back six months later. It, it just decomposes. Yeah. And that in itself brings all the microbials and all of the fungi and everything that needs to be in the system to decompose it, basically. Yeah. And again, its nutrients just go back yeah. into, the, into the forest. Seems quite simple, actually. Um, it is, I think it is quite simple, like it's yeah. a simple concept. It is a little bit of maintenance because you have to control the light yep. in, the, in the sense that you, you, you may need to prune some trees. So for example, the system has just grown a lot um, recently. So we do need to do what we call a pulse. So when we go through and chop and drop, we try and do a whole row at a time yep. because what happens is once the plant gets chopped a little bit, it sends out a signal basically saying, I've been chopped, I need to grow. So it's a little bit like a, a growth signal. Mm -hmm. And if there's other plants in that row that haven't been chopped, they, like, they won't get that, they won't have that same growth signal. So we try and do it all at the same time so that everything in the row is like, okay, guys, we've all got to grow again. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, so we need to we need to cut back. So we can we can take a walk through, and I can show you yeah. a little bit more hands on, I guess, if you want to do that. Sounds great. Let's do it. So here in this row, we try to use um, natives as much as possible as well. So we've got um, this is a native rosella, and it, again, it's there just to chop and drop. It's here to support the system. Um, we've got cassava here, which is really a really good um, nitrogen fixer and um, it is prone to pruning. So we chop and drop, chop and drop, chop and drop. And it just feeds the system. There's a little lily pilly, and then we'll move on to the fruit. So this is a citrus. Mm -hmm. The fruit is planted anywhere between five and eight meters apart, depending on its requ light requirement. So yeah, in this row, for example, I'd probably only have three or four fruit that I'm going to harvest, mm -hmm. you know, trees that I'm going to harvest fruit from. The rest here is just for support. That's so cool. So with the pulse, we would need to come in and, and cut the rosella, cut the um, cassava, like we would cut it right down, move through. The bananas need to be um, managed, like there should only be three um, in, a, in a clump. So we can chop these out and go plant another banana five, you know, every five meters. Yeah. But yeah, so if we just chop everything down, this banana is obviously wow. fruiting, so we'll leave it to fruit. And then once it's fruited, we'll chop it out and then put it on the outside of the system here just to, to feed back all of the nutrients. Right. The, my pioneer plants are getting really big now. <laughs> and actually they need to be cut across the top. Mm -hmm. So we'd, we're probably gonna um, cut, I think at about, three or four meters we just cut the tops off okay. and keep the stems um, other than the the, the uh, canopy we'll keep the stems clear yeah the, the trunk sorry not the stems so that will create enough shade for the 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 fruit underneath that has a, is a medium mm -hmm. strata for example so it needs some shade but look at this cassava <laughs> oh my goodness blowing up i've never seen it like that so we can come in here and prune this right down here and it will it'll it'll reshoot yeah like this and then we just chop this into smaller pieces and literally lay it here on the side of the system and it will decompose and and give back and how does the soil look so uh, should we get oh a gosh, so it's probably, soil check it's probably a bit dry actually <laughs> um gosh it's not looking very good so this system is only two years old. Yeah. So we do have a long way to go with regards to building soil. Yeah, it's very dry. So we desperately need some of that rain. Yes. And it's amazing to see how the different rows respond differently as well. Mm -hmm. Like some are um, obviously not as dry. Gosh, it is very dry, hey? Yeah, but the um, organic matter is forming. You can yeah. see that the soil is completely covered. Yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. So that's the number one rule in Syntropics is no yep. bare soil. Yes. <laughs> I think that's pretty standard though across the board. So if you've got um, bare soil, you're losing the, t the top layer would be to the wind. Um, obviously the heat and the, and the water, you're just, it's all evaporating. So you mm -hmm. want, you definitely need it to be covered. If not with mulch, then with something that you've, you've chopped and dropped and yep. put it down on the system. That's great. And um, two, two more questions for you. So yeah. if, if you were to start this system over with the knowledge that you have now, what would you do differently? What are some things you'd do differently? I would not plant as much. Okay. So this is, this is a particularly big system. Um, we had a bit of a rough start. We had a great sort of wet season just after we planted. And some of the plants that you plant when you first put in a system um, are there to really boost the soil, mm -hmm. but they need maintaining. And I was here on my own and we had all this rain and these beans just got out of control. So they kind of smothered a lot of the fruit trees. Mm -hmm. So they weren't getting the light that they needed. Um, and I had to go around and, and cut that all back and feed the system, but I was only one man. <laughs> <laughs> right, so plant accordingly to how much yeah. work you have available. That's right. Right. It is right, yeah. Um, and then we had the drought, you know, in 2022, yes. that year that was so incredibly dry. Yeah. I've never experienced. Um, so I think the system had a bit of a rough start. Like we should be producing more fruit than we are by the, at the moment. Like this would be our second year. But I suspect by the end of this year we'll be in full production basically. Yeah. And then I definitely will need help harvesting and yeah. maintaining and all of that sort of thing. So. Yeah, it's definitely not a one man or woman it's, job. It's, if, you know, if you started with 20 meters, see how long it takes you. See if you enjoy it, because yeah. if you don't enjoy it, don't do it. Like it's, yeah. it's, it's quite stressful if, you're not, if it's not something that you enjoy doing. So start small, especially if you're just trying to feed your family or something like that. Mm -hmm. I reckon 20 meters is more than enough. And then you can see how it responds, how it grows, what it needs from you. Mm -hmm. And then you can say, okay, cool, I'm ready. Let's do another 20 meters or another 40 meters or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I think that would be my biggest <laughs> suggestion is, yeah. is definitely start smaller and just understand how things grow and, and what they need, yeah. basically. That's great. And financially how would you set how would how viable would you say this system is like could you do this and make a, a decent profit or would you have to wait a long time until you can get to that point I think you have to wait you know if if you plant a fruit tree it's at least two years before you see any return on that yeah so I mean if you multiply that by 520 and like I said we had that rough start so basically any return on investment is another year away f for us yeah. at this rate. I mean, don't get me wrong, we are still harvesting a lot, like the elderberries, beautiful, as you can see, the bananas are coming through. Mm -hmm. We've had pawpaw, we've, um, actually we've got three rows of the system. We've planted like a climbing system. Mm -hmm. So we have grapes, passion fruit, dragon fruit. And those, we all had, I had a bumper passion fruit crop last year. Grapes should have been this year. Um, a bigger a bigger crop i have a couple of vines somewhere else and they went gangbusters but the grapes in the system didn't yeah. do so well um and the dragon fruit is is yeah. is doing well so um yeah we, we i mean we're getting fruit from in the system it's not yeah. like you have to wait that long but it's more of a longer term investment it is yeah. it is yeah cool well, thanks yeah. for showing us that and You're it's welcome. it's very very nice to be in here like when I farm, I would way rather be in here than out in a sunny field. Like this is a very peaceful area. There is so much more potential that what you can do here. So if you wanted to run into row crops, yep. you can call them alley crops. It is an option for you to do that here. I felt we needed to build the soil a bit more than what we have done. But I have to be honest, I'm actually also enjoying the, the low cut grass because yeah. when it gets away, it, it gets quite high. So, but what we would do is you use the inter alley 
grow for biomass mm -hmm. for your system. So even though we are mowing it, we're mowing it so that all of the cuttings go onto the system at the moment. So if you were to do an inter-row crop, mm -hmm. you would have like, I don't know, let's say a meter of biomass, you'd have a meter or two meters of your crop mm -hmm. and then another meter of biomass. And then you have this whole section here. And again, it will bring nutrients to the system. Mm -hmm. They will all feed off of each other. And that you could call a cash crop. Yeah. So you would, that would be one season's worth. And then you can harvest that and sell that. And that, you know, that would obviously help you with your return on investment. Mm -hmm. It would also feed the soil and improve the soil like tenfold. Mm -hmm. um, it's also just having the manpower. Lots of work. <laughs> Yeah. to do that so yeah i just wanted to say that there's there is more you can do in the rows the other thing is i think in brazil they're using cows between the rows which yeah. i would absolutely love to do but i don't you'd have to literally uh, fence each row mm. because you'd have to stop them from just completely destroying the system um, unless it was a more mature system right where the trees are higher yeah it could be they could yeah absolutely um, I think also in Brazil, where they do run the cows between the rows, the alleys are probably twice the size. Yes. So it would be a bit easier to manage cattle in, like it would be quite hard to manage them in this sort of small space. But um, yeah. I'm thinking of doing chickens. That would be cool. <laughs> yes. Uh, another, another story. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, the potential is endless. So it just depends mm. on what you have the time for, what you have the resource for and uh, what you enjoy doing. Yeah. Yeah, that's great. Thanks for showing us that. You're welcome. Should we move on to the cows? Yes, let's go. We'll have to jump in the buggy. So we'll take a little drive around. Mm -hmm. 